Hello everyone, my name is Chad Zhang and I'm an electrical, electrical electronics student. So uh, today my title will be Robotics Without Mathematics and what I'm going to emphasize here is that I'm just year two student so I don't know a lot about robotics actually. So I'm going to tell you a brief mock-up of how I approach my problems for my passion. So when I was young, I loved animals, even to the smallest insects like ants. And the reason why is because they have interesting little facts all around the world. For example, ants are found all across continents on the planet except Antarctica. Ironic. Also, there's a lot of interesting things we can also inspire from nature. Let me give you a few examples. The most typical, birds inspired us to build planes. Whales for submarines. Bats for radar and uh, an epidemic. <laughs> Even the apple has inspired Isaac to build the laws of gravity. So, how about the future? Right now, there's been a new branch called soft robotics, where people draw inspirations from octopus or squids due to their soft body. And we can see here is that it helps us handle uh, soft objects, so like fragile food, um, rough terrain. So these things can help us to maneuver uh, tight spaces due to their pneumatic systems in their body. So there are no mechanical systems involved, everything is pressurized. So when I was 16 years old, me and my team built a snake robot. And from what we know from a snake robot, it, move, it moves usually in an S shape, right? So the one thing we know about snakes is that they have scales all over their body. And they rely on those scales as friction to propel themselves forward. But you can see from this robotic design is that there is literally no friction. It is all plastic in the center. So me and my friends improvised. We combined the locomotion of a worm and a snake build a propulsion. So here at the back, we put rubber tires and at the front as a weight. So weight contributes to friction. So the real result is quite interesting. So right, you can see here, it's an S compression at the center, but a worm-like compression at their both ends. So that's how we propel ourselves forward. So now I'm going to teach you guys how to build your own bio-inspired robot. Now let's start something simple, interesting, all right? So for example, you have a crab here, and we have grippers. So these are claws of a crab. So what can a claw of a crab do? So in case you guys don't know, crabs only move their claws with one side, meaning their bottom hinge is actually static. It's only the top part moving. And what does adv this advantage give us is that we can save motors per gripper. So usually, if you were to design a gripper, you will need two motors for each hand. And imagine you have two hands, six hands, 12 hands, 20. You have 40 double times the motor. But if we use a claw design, we can save the motor usage by half. So first things first is to find the parts where it interests you. For example, okay, I'm interested in the claw. How does it look like? Where's the muscle? And how should I design it? Next is what I say, an animator's uh, passion. So what you do is you think like an animator. So you see in cartoons when you were young, you see how they draw, they draw flip it, flip, flipping pages of different uh, animation and then you flip them real fast. So in this case, you imagine the claw to be open, close, open. Or you can imagine other things like walking. You put, put a step forward, another step forward and stuff while re remaining your body weight. Then you start the prototyping. So my friend here built a 3D model of the system with one servo at one gear and the other one is locked to it. So when one gear turns, the other th gear turns as well. Simple enough, right? You can even do this with cardboard if you try. So here is just a Bluetooth system to control the gripper, all right? So this is done with the uh, Arduino. It's a very simple application. You can even find it online on Instructables or even YouTube. So to, um, to conclude things a little bit, so first pick an animal you love, especially the animal you love. The more legs, the better, you know? Go get that much legs. So then you find the parts you love, all right? Then you start animating it. Then you start building the prototype. 
Now I'm going to share a robot I built for the past three months. And I chose the spider robot. The first reason I chose the spider robot is because one of my lecturers are afraid of spiders. And I love to scare them with that. The second one is that spiders has been my childhood since young. Because Spider-Man, uh, spiders crawling all over your bed, um, I don't know, a lot of things involve spiders. And one thing about spiders is that they have no muscle. All right? So what, how they move is basically they have their heart pumping blood, uh, not blood, something like that, through their legs. And that makes their leg extend. That's why when you kill a spider, it just shrivels up because its heart stops beating. All right? And another thing I love about spiders is that they are high body to weight ratio. They have a very large body, but very light. And that gives them very efficient hunters as they move very fast across the moon. So here's the mock-up of how I usually design a robot. So I will draw which axis I'm going to turn, uh, where I'm going to put the parts and stuff. So here you can see the hand is moving like that. And then another axis moving left and right. And finally at the end, up and down. So it's something moving like this. All right? Now I want you all to guess what is the outcome, all right? It's basically just a dancing thing, all right? It's, 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 it's a failure. In my opinion, it's a complete failure, a mess. And why? It's only moving at 0.1 centimeters per second, and it's dancing. It's not moving forward at all, all right? Just look at it. Now, I'm going to show you the final product of my robot. And I'm going to have to exceed the slide a little bit here. Hey, is it working? The HDMI? Duplicate. Oh, where? All right, it's spinning to the crowd. Say hi, everyone. So you can tilt left and right. All right, I'm going to do something risky, all right? I'm not sure if this works. I'm going to let it jump off the stage. All right? I think there's a talk about depression just now, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, don't, learn, don't take example from the spider, all right? Oh, oh, oh! Is it gonna be fine? Ah, oh, I made it, I think. Is it? Come on, come on. Come on, come on, you can do it. Ah, uh, come on, come on. Ah, there you go. All right. So, what I'm going to try to say here is that, yes, robotics without mathematics is not the real way. Like, how would I say this is that, it's definitely not the best way to build a robot. But that doesn't mean you can't build one without it. So, what I'm trying to emphasize here is that, have you ever had a passion that you wanted to pursue since you were young, but all your doubts tell you you're not smart enough, you don't know the basics, don't try to do it, stuff like that. That's when I go to the animals. I mean, they're basically uh, lower IQ than us and stuff like that, right? So when I learn from these animals, I figure out that, yes, you don't need the knowledge essentially to do that. You can mimic others to do your own buildings. But when you want to improve your idea, that's when you go to the mathematics. And however, before you reach that place, you have to start somewhere. You have to start from ground zero. You can't just go into the hardest applications in the planet and expect to understand everything in one night. That's impossible. You have to start somewhere. So, I'll, before I end my talk, I want to show one quote to everyone. First, you learn to read, then you read to learn. You have to start somewhere. Build your passion, then only tackle the hard problems. Thank you very much.